Boys and girls of the shaft! Today, we're gonna talk about a game that is going to be the end of ARK forever! Atlas ARK 2.0! Incredible! Since it's been announced, there has been a tidal wave of screenshots, interviews, announcements, new information, and most importantly, HYPE! So before you contract scurvy, here's seven things you need to know about Atlas. Let's get right into it with number 10! After this message from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Tayrock. Upgrade your style with these super fly and not gaudy watches. Seriously, lose the stupid giant gold watch. You look like a 14 year old. Use code freedom for a 20% off discount. Should I repeat it? Okay, I will. Number 10, character customization. That's right, kiddos. Atlas is gonna have the most advanced customization of any art game we've ever seen up till this point. It's incredible. The character customization plays a huge part in Atlas, having way better customization options than what we have seen from Ark Survival Evolved. No longer can we have our weird fat people that still have abs. Now you can be tubby, thin, muscly, anything your heart desires. You can even add your own per pixel tattoo design that is permanent. Yes, finally. Now here's the really cool part or the really lame part, it's up to you. You have real time aging and hair growth. You will get old and you will die. Just like in real life, kiddo. <laughs> Just a quick reminder that you're gonna die and then you can start it all over as your legacy. That's right, your own kid or find the Fountain of Youth if you're smart enough. Whoa, wait, what? A Fountain of Youth? That's actually in the game. Wow. Number nine. I don't feel like reading this entire script right now, so I'm gonna have Ashley read every other part. Let's go, Ashley, go for it, go, go, go. You know what? I will gladly pick this up for here. Number nine, creatures. I'm not gonna go shouting it because I don't wanna break your ears with my squeaky little voice. That's a no-no. But anyway, don't forget, this is still basically R. That's right, we can tame creatures. Well, reskin creatures. Let's face it, that horse is an Equus. We've seen it. I mean, look at the before and after shot. Same thing. But luckily, there are also brand new creatures we have not seen before. This game will have more than 50 creatures at launch, varying greatly. Having farming creatures like horses to shoulder mounts such as parrots and monkeys to even magical mermaids and sea monsters, and ogres, hydras, and dragons. And yes, that is right, it is a dragon, not a wyvern. Take that, thick freedom. Now, we can't tell you how this taming will go, but we can tell you there is a new taming mechanic, and even a trading mechanic. You'll be able to bring these creatures back in to trade for some more booty. We all want that booty. Number eight, map size. I know you've probably heard about this, but it's actually pretty shocking. So let me tell you about it again, but with more detail. Atlas is huge. Let me tell you, it is just massive. Being 1,200 times the size of Ark's map and can host 40,000 players spread out across its 700 different islands with a 45,000 square kilometer ocean. That's massive. Now, as an add-on, if you really don't want to PVP and just want to chill out and RP, there will be PVE servers. That is fantastic. But bear in mind that essentially there's only actually two servers that you'll be able to join, PvE and PvP. So every region is only going to have one PvP region and one PvE region. Keep that in mind. Now we also cannot forget that this is an MMO, having little storylines that you must follow, but still including quests and NPCs like your main quest that involves you traveling the entire world to collect nine artifacts and bring them to the center of the map where players can fight an enormous sea demon. Ah. And for a more calmer mission, uh, there are bottles with treasure maps in them. Cool. 
Number seven, boat construction. Atlas allows you extensive boat customization. Just as you would on land, you can build all over your ship. You can name your ship, paint it, and even make your own pixel by pixel flag. You can place planks and gun ports and every single structure piece has a physical weight and material. This means you can create your own crazy stuff and come up with some crazy metas. But don't get too attached. Atlas is cutthroat. Not to mention sailing does wear down your ship. I'm sure there will be a way to repair, but if they're comparing this to EVE Online, get ready to lose your treasured ship. Number six, getting that booty, man. The PVP system on Atlas is ruthless. You can take and steal anything you like from someone's boat to someone's pets. You can even run off with their NPC crew, man. This is totally insane. No more killing other people's hard work. You can just straight take it and run off with it pirate style. Don't forget on Atlas, you can own your own territory, apply taxation and rule it in the way you want to. You can be kind or ruthless. The land you've conquered and claimed as your own will be seen on your giant in-game map and even on the Atlas website for all to see your glory. Incredible. Number five, fighting system. Atlas includes a tactical melee combat system with blocks, parries, dodges, character motion, shields, <gasps> Stunning attacks, strength field attacks, directional attacks. It is insane and takes away my breath. Quite <laughs> literally. Oh, I'm not good at talking for that long. I am really sick. <clears throat> but it is way more complicated than ARCs. As a huge fan of For Honor, this is honestly one of the most exciting things about Atlas to me. So much better than just the left click simulator we know as ARC. Now, you can also fight with so many different weapons, using your fists, swords, maces, blackjacks, daggers. And that's just all we know right now. So who knows how many there will be? This is really nice, having period appropriate weaponry. Unlike the confusing storyline of Ark, you know, with its weird laser gun things and dinosaurs, it's just strange. We actually have something that fits in. Having guns and swords and pirate ships and nothing just weird. I mean, I'm saying that and we have dragons and hydras. Okay, maybe it's still gonna be a bit weird, but less weird. Now, this is a weird little tidbit I wanted to add at the end, but this also includes a skill-based active reload system. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure what this entails, but if it's anything that makes the combat more skill-based, I am so in. Number four, you thought I was gonna yell. Ha, I'm not gonna yell every time. Micro transactions, guys! I know it's everybody's favorite thing ever. So here's the deal on microtransactions. Now, many of you would be sitting there wondering, hmm, how will Wildcard, or in this case, the studio that is a branch of Wildcard, make money on this one though. I mean, I know they're selling it for like $30, but an MMO, surely that's very expensive, right? Well, the answer, little Billy, is microtransactions. That's right, go grab your granny and your mother and your father and your dog's credit cards and get ready to spend, 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 because microtransactions, ah uh, yes. Remember how we talked about wonderful customization options? Yes, there's gonna be wonderful customization and many of them you're gonna get to buy. Woo! So basically Atlas is getting in on that skin game the same way Fortnite did. And don't forget that they will be adding this while in early access. <laughs> For those of you who remember the DLC in early access, now we're getting microtransactions in early access. Woohoo! This is probably gonna cost me a lot of money, but they made it very clear there will be no sneaky price rise or DLC for Atlas before it's out of early access. They must have learned their lesson from Mark, huh? Unless they get another lawsuit and then I'm sure we'll see another DLC. But if you don't want to spend money on Atlas's in-game cosmetics, there will be in-game ways to grind it out. I don't know how long that will last though, as if you can get it in-game, uh, not many will want to buy. So I'm predicting if everything is going to be unlockable legit, it's probably going to be ridiculously grindy. Think of For Honor for the three of you who played that. 
Number three, easy starting points. If you're worried that you're gonna step in and get completely stomped, mate, well, worry no more. Atlas has a level cap starter zone and it allows you to just learn the ropes and meet new players in a safe space before you venture out into the big world of Atlas. I can't wait to see this get ruined some way or another by the older, more experienced tribes that will find a way to abuse it and make it so no one wants to play on servers, woo! But another easy starting point is to make sure you stay tuned for all of our tips and trick videos on Atlas because we will hold your hand throughout this entire experience experience. Oi, Thick, it's your turn. It's number two. I did number three. No, I don't know where he's run off to. Well, guess I'm taking over this next point as well. Number two, law. If you thought the great law of art could never be topped, well, yeah, maybe you're actually right, but there is law here too. Take a look. This is a snippet of the law that we have received. Long ago, far above the watery world of Atlas, there once existed a magic-powered golden age, where great empires of the sky lived at peace alongside magical creatures, flourishing upon floating continents above the clouds, all powered by a magical source of energy known as the heart of the goddess, granted by the powerful beings who dwell in the stars beyond. However, a powerful warlord known as Zevos sought to unite human civilizations over magic kind and launched a war that broke the heart into pieces, unleashing a wave of destruction that shattered the floating land masses and plunge them into the waters below. Many generations later, as living memory of the Sundering has faded into legend and the once plentiful magical energy has long since dissipated, descendants of the protectors of the heart of the goddess, known as Pathfinders, emerge from their provincial oceanic lives to explore new continents and islands and seek out the power they may yet contain. Across the vast new world, they'll encounter hostile creatures, technological remnants of the Golden Age past, and ultimately, the undying spirit of Zevos himself and his soulless army of the dam. Still intent on recovering the pieces of the heart of the goddess to raise the continents once again under his vision. If the latest generations of Pathfighters can outwit and outgun Zevos and his legions and recover the heart pieces for themselves, they'll be faced with the very same choice, whether to attempt to restore the old world or build a new, better one. Now, I'll admit that all sounds cool and all, but I honestly am not liking as much as the lore of Ark yet. Hopefully, it will actually come out and impress us all. Seeing an MMO is meant to be pretty story-based, let's hope they really step up their game for this one. And I'll let Thick scream in the last point. And finally, coming in at number one, <laughs> one inbreeding. That crack in my voice is because inbreeding. <laughs> That's right, boys and girls. Have you ever looked at your cousin and thought she was kind of cute? Well, that's actually kind of messed up. So you should go see a psychologist or something about that. But, <laughs> well, you can live out your fantasies right here in Atlas. Because, as strange as it is, there's going to be breeding with... <laughs> Humans? What? Yeah, that's right. So humans are gonna be breedable. So I'm guessing since you can steal that booty, uh, that actually means that you can have a consensual relationship with a fine young lady or lad, or you can just steal that booty. That's really messed up, but awesome. That's gonna really piss off a lot of the people who are into that consent stuff, right? But this has to make you wonder. So the human breeding, the intention is, you know, you're getting old, you're about to die. You need to have a great heir to your great empire so that when you die, you'll take command of your son or daughter or whatever and carry on your legacy. And I'm assuming that better stats mean a better bred child, just like with Ark. But you really, this really makes you wonder, huh? So in Ark, there is inbreeding. So does that mean there's going to be inbreeding in Atlas too? Why wouldn't there be? Think about that. And that's a weird point to end this off on because we don't have a ton of information about that, but I just wanted to let you know that, yeah, you can inbreed, probably, maybe, pending. So anyway, if you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button and you hit that notification bell because we are going to be going ham on Atlas when that comes out. I'll see you guys in the next video.